This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treats and Sakura Co. More deets on yummy treats after the video. I have witnessed things our ancestors only dreamed to see. A once in a blue moon treasure that our world has to offer. Igor. I can't believe this movie isn't world famous. One hour and 20 minutes and it made me see the face of God. <laughs> Alright, enough of the lies. Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Rasmo, and I'm going to be reviewing an animated movie called Igor. For a movie made in 2008 with a budget of $25 million, it did pretty well at the box office, raking in $30.7 million. Money does talk, but what does the audience think? With a 39% on Rotten Tomatoes and an audience score not falling far behind with a 38%, Let's just say people didn't like it. Is Igor really that bad? Or is it just a misunderstood piece of media buried under the multitude of animated movies that came out that year? Namely Kung Fu Panda, Wall-E, Bolt, Ponyo, Barbie Mariposa, Delgo. Suffice it to say, there were a lot of memorable movies in 2008. Let's get a quick recap of the movie. So for those who haven't watched the movie, you can go ahead and watch it yourself if you don't want me to spoil the story. So Igor starts off with this little 2000s, yep, that's me. I bet you're wondering how I got into this situation type of introduction where he talks about wanting to be a scientist but since he's hunchback he is immediately an assistant a servant if you will called Igor and right off the bat they showcase the dry humor that this movie is gonna have and I'll be honest this joke at the beginning made me laugh so hard hi I'm here about the Igor wanted ad my name's Igor <laughs> well of course it is I've got a hunch on my back what's my name gonna be Kevin <laughs> uh. It's not funny like the whole movie, which is concerning since it's labeled a comedy. But I laughed so hard because every time someone in this movie makes a humorous quip, they have the scene go silent for a moment. It's like someone was supposed to put a laugh track but completely forgot about it and I found that hilarious. But it did get stale real quick. Anyway, so basically Igor is a smart Igor but he has to serve under a mad scientist and people treat Igor so lowly that the scientist he's working with, Dr. Glickenstein, will literally chop him up to pieces if he caught him doing something smart or anything that it isn't like an Igor, like think. Well, to cut it short, when Dr. Glickenstein dies and the king drops by right as his boss got cooked like fried chicken sold on the street and Igor lies saying that Dr. Glickenstein was actually creating life, which isn't something a mad scientist has done before. So to save his skin, he creates this evil monster. I mean, would you look at the size of this thing? The way it stared while hanging in the ceiling, it was good, I'll give it that. But when the monster screams, somehow the budget went from 25 million dollars to 25 dollars. I don't know why this part looks super bad, but after that it went back to normal. She runs off to an orphanage for blind orphans. It was so specific and I had to chuckle. There we find out that she's not actually evil and that she's super sweet and innocent. Apparently the evil bone that Igor put in her, which was very weak to sunlight, remember that phrase because it's gonna be important later, didn't activate because she has to do something evil. But she's too sweet to even harm a fly so it's not gonna get activated. So they take her to a brainwashed place hoping to make her evil by forcing her to watch axe murders. But Brian changed the channel to a lifetime's worth of acting lessons, which made her into an entirely different character, which I was scared I'd find her annoying with her first introduction, but surprisingly I liked her character. Oh, and I forgot to mention, there's this guy called Dr. Frederick Schadenfreude who wants to overthrow the king by making the best science fair project that destroys people, but he's not actually an inventor slash mad scientist because he just steals the invention he wins every year with the help of his girlfriend Jacqueline. They plan to steal Dr. Glickenstein's invention this year but saw that he was dead and also saw Igor's blueprints so you know who their next target is. So as Igor and the gang go home, Dr. Schadenfreude tries to shoot them but failed to do so since Eva, the monster's name, has indestructible skin. So she shoots the ray back and Eva saves everybody. Igor tricks Eva, who wants to be an actress, that she's auditioning for the role of Annie. Because Eva states that so many terrific girls got their start playing Annie. Which she isn't wrong. Some famous personalities you might know did play Annie in the past, like Ariana Grande or Sadie Sink. And she sings Tomorrow, which I can't play because copyright is a hard knock pain in my ass. With her enthusiasm and dancing, she wrecks the place, which is what Igor wants. They have this little talk in the balcony where Eva rests her voice, which I found adorable. Thank you, Igor. I'm whispering to protect my voice. 
People who watch ASMR would probably love that part, I'm just saying. So Igor tells her how the world they live in is evil and that's how it works. Evil is the norm and you can succeed if you are evil. And then Eva says the whole lesson of the movie. I'd rather be a good nobody than an evil somebody. Slap that in a Facebook post. And also, this scene already hinted that these two would have a romantic relationship with each other, which I found weird because he created her and he even said this line about Eva. Gosh, I feel like I'm sending my kid off to school for the first time. That could have been a throwaway line, but the dynamic at the start made me think that they were actually gonna have a father, daughter, or somewhat familial sort of relationship. But with the dynamic the movie chose, I'd like to forget that I assumed that. Now let's introduce Heidi, Dr. Gligenstein's girlfriend, gives Igor a letter that they got from the mail. It was a trap to bring Igor to Dr. Schadenfreude's place. Eva got jealous, spoke to Heidi, and Heidi called her looking like something that was put together in a junkyard and that she has a very ugly face. I get where she's coming from, but I've watched this big giant human collage sing her heart out for Annie, so I will not tolerate this Eva slander, you balloon ass bubblegum toothpick hair looking skank, to diss her like that when she was so polite. So Schadenfreude tries to get Igor to team up with him and make Eva evil, but he doesn't want to and he escapes. Then it is revealed that Heidi was actually Jacqueline in disguise, all along with other female forms that pose as the girlfriends of the scientists they stole from in the past. Igor tries to tell Eva the truth about creating her to be a monster of destruction, but Heidi calls out to him, makes out with him, and Schadenfreude swoops in to convince Eva to come with him. The king pops up and Igor comes clean, and he was sent to the Igor recycling plant, and I thought there was gonna be a cliche where Eva actually didn't go with Schadenfreude and is there to save him last minute, but no, no, he actually goes to the recycling plant. His two inventions, Brian, which is just a robot powered by a dumb brain, and Scamper, an immortal bunny with suicidal tendencies. I, I don't know how to sugarcoat that. That's basically his description. They save him by the bunny biting his own legs, which he states wasn't the first time. Uh, that's how Igor was saved. Anyway, they go to the stadium where mad inventors present their horrific monstrous creations and Schadenfreude managed to activate Eva's evil bone. Yay! Igor and the gang end up in the king's beacon of evil. Remember when I mentioned that in this world, evil is the norm? Yeah, the king was the one who taught them that because of this evil beacon, but it's actually a weather ray and the king is a big fat liar. So Igor goes to the Kilseum to stop Eva all the while all the monsters and inventions are fighting it off and Eva is destroying everyone all the while singing tomorrow. Igor stops her and with the weather ray destroyed, the evil bone is exposed to sunlight. Wink wink, remember that foreshadowing slash setup from before? G whatever, Eva is evil no more. And Eva and Igor are boyfriend and girlfriend. All's well that ends well. Now after going through all that, I can confidently say that the ratings for this movie were... Right, they, they were right, it wasn't great. But I'll be honest, I enjoyed the movie a lot. Sure, the pacing was super fast at the start and suddenly took a slow turn. And sure, the humor wasn't funny and really dry and it wasn't so memorable. But at the end of the movie, I really didn't dread watching or felt like I wasted my time for Igor. I think it's great. With the budget that they had and the time allotted for the story, I can understand it's not going to be the best, but they managed to do what they can with it. I'm not saying it's good. Oh, hell nah, far from. It. But all I'm saying is that it's uh, enjoyable. Some people might argue that, hey, they just don't like it because it's for kids or only kids will like this. But I gotta say, a movie catered for kids will be a great movie if it can also let the adults enjoy it. I don't like how people attack a movie for being catered to kids, but I also don't like how they're defending a movie because it's catered to a younger audience. Yes, Igor doesn't have deep conversations, witty humor, or thought-provoking themes, and not every movie has to, but with the story of Igor, I feel like there could have been so much more characterizations or themes that they could have explored that would have made the movie better. I think Igor the movie is enjoyable and the animation wasn't bad either, but the plot and animation reminded me of those Max Lucado short animations, which have simple one quotable line for a life lesson and clunky animation, but it's charming. I think the horror-esque theme story works well with the way they were animated. Whether the reason may be the budget or lack thereof, or an intentional artistic choice, it somewhat fits well with the world they set up. It's a bit stiff and uncanny, but I think it's a lot better than a bouncy smooth style of animation, since this is a place for violence, evil doing, and monsters. Oh, I'd also like to point out that at the very, very start, they make a joke about, um, well, I'll just show you the clip. Fame, fortune, a rent-free castle in the hills, they get it all. They're the top of the heap. Igor, pull the switch! I 
know you already know who they're talking about. All in all, this movie is not that good. I'd like to say mid, but saying that a movie is mid is just saying that it's good but not memorable. But I don't think this movie deserves that title. I guess it's the kind of movie that is just the guilty pleasure kind of one, you know? Where you know a lot of people don't like it, and you see the glaring flaws everywhere, but you still enjoy it. You know what else is a guilty pleasure? Chips, chocolate, snacks that give you cloud nine feeling. May I present to you today's sponsor, Tokyo Treats and Sakura Ko. Tokyo Treats and Sakura Ko are both subscription boxes that eat boxes from Japan right to your home. This month, Tokyo Treats prepared a lovely Christmas themed box called Santa Snack Fest Box, filled with holiday traditional snacks that show the magic of Christmas in Japan. On the other box, Sakura Ko delivers a taste of Tochigi small town Niko, transporting you through the snacks, the traditional rustic atmosphere, and culinary riches you'd only find in Tochigi with their box Tochigi's Traditions. Once you get the box, you are greeted with a magazine that includes all the things you got, along with the ingredients and the allergens you need to know before munching on them grub. I took the egg. The same goes for Sakura Ko. They even packed the Furoshiki wrapping cloth. You know the little cloth thing you see being wrapped in bentos? Yeah, this is it. They even showed a guide on how to do it. Now I can fulfill my Japanese lunch weeb dreams. Let's take a taste. I took a bite out of the Tongari Christmas corn chips because you can never go wrong with corn chips and also because it's the biggest eye catcher in the box. I didn't know how to open it and apparently I just needed to rip Santa's mouth off the picture, I mean. It tasted sweet and the packet was just full of them. So I really got full with just these corn chips. Next, I tried the Christmas chocolate daifuku where if you put it in the corn chips, it looks like a little ice cream cone. Look at, <laughs> look at that. I, I'm so childish. By far, I gotta say the daifuku is my favorite in this box. It's super soft and sweet, but not too sweet. It's perfect for my non-sweet sweet tooth. Now in Sakura Ko's corner, I took a bite out of these adorable Anko donuts, which really taste good. I never tasted a donut with red bean paste before, but I'm not regretting it at all. It really fits together for some reason. I'm surprised. I left the thing in the freezer, but I went to go grab the strawberry and yogurt piccolo dolce, d dolce? And they come in pairs if you have that little special someone for the Christmas time. <laughs> Luckily for us, I don't have one, so I'm eating this out. I'll be real. I wasn't a fan of strawberry desserts as much, but I really like this one, I swear. It's sour like strawberry itself, but also sweet with the yogurt. It's, it's a good match. And it really looks cute, don't you think so? If you'd like a box yourself, feel free to use this promo. It'll give you $5 off of your first purchase and help the channel along with it. Happy snacking and Merry Christmas, sweeties. Do you have a movie or any old or niche animated movie that you've heard about? Share it down in the comments and maybe I'd feature it in a video. So yeah, thanks a bunch to my awesome patrons. Big thanks to my patrons in the b -b 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 butternut tier. Cross, Christian V, Kyle, Jacob K, and Piranet. And a special mention to Epignite in the Dill Pickles tier. 